The question posed today is why do bad things happen to good people? This makes us lose our faith in God. Is he actually just and kind? Something that seems to be bad now turns out to be good later on. Likewise, there are things that seem to be good now, but later on they turn out to be bad. Suppose you had planned your summer vacation and purchased the train ticket, but on the way to the railway station you were caught in a terrible traffic jam. You thought what a bad thing is happening to you. And by the time you reached the station, the train had already left. And that made you conclude this was so awful. But then a few hours later, you got the news that the train had an accident. And you said, my, my, my life has been saved. You thanked your stars. Such a good thing happened. You were stuck in the jam. Likewise, it's always a matter of perspective. When the mother weans the child away from excessive sweets, the child thinks a bad thing is happening to me. And the mother's perspective is, it's such a good thing. When you have to force yourself to exercise, it seems such a bad thing. But when it results in enhancing your health and well-being, it turns out to be a good thing. Likewise, our definition of good things is that we get material well-being and prosperity. But the saints have a different definition. Take a look at Kunti Devi. When Sri Krishna asked her, Kunti, ask for a boon. The battle of Mahabharat was over. And for 22 days, Sri Krishna stayed in Hastinapur. But he then informed Yudhishthir that the Yadus are waiting for him in Dwarka and he needs to leave. Reluctantly, Yudhishthir gave permission. And the chariot moved forward when Kunti came and fell in front. And she started crying, Shri Krishna, you are the soul of our life. And if you leave, what will we do without you? Shri Krishna said, Varam Bruhi, Kunti, I am very pleased with you. Ask what you want. Kunti said, Vipada Santu Nashashwa Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru, O Shri Krishna, please do one thing to me. Give me difficulties and hardships in the world. Shri Krishna said, Kunti, but everybody looks on that as bad things. And they request me for the reverse. Sukha Sampati Ghara Ave. Their idea of good things is that we should get material prosperity. And you are asking for the reverse. Kunti said, Maharaj, you know very well why I am asking. I do, but speak it out so that others can also hear. Kunti then said, Janmaishwarya Shruta Shri Bhire Dhamma Namada Puman Naivar Hatya Bidhatum Vai Twama Kinchana Gocharam. O Shri Krishna, it is these material opulences and luxuries that keeps us distracted away from you. And that is why, if they are snatched away, that will be the best thing because then bhavato darshanam yatsya the punar bhava darshanam there will be nothing to entangle me and i'll be able to look exclusively towards you so let me read to you 
from my latest book questions you always wanted to ask regarding good and bad things what is truly a good or a bad thing in our narrow perspective we define good things as the attainment of material pleasures the deprivation of bodily comforts then becomes our idea of bad things these labels are in fact faulty a truly good thing is that which results in our inner growth a truly bad thing is that which leads to the downfall of our eternal soul from this perspective even suffering may sometimes be a blessing in disguise or a good thing besides whatever is happening to us is not being given randomly by god in a whimsical manner rather he has a law of karma in place and we are getting the consequences of our own actions observe everywhere in nature there are laws that govern the microcosm to the macrocosm and all of science is the study of these laws and their applications so when inanimate matter is governed by laws aren't there also laws relevant to us humans that is the law of karma karma pradhana vishva kari rakha जो जस करई सो तस फलु चाखा नाउ वेदर वी बिलीव इन द लॉ और डू नॉट बिलीव इन इट वी विल बी सब्जेक्ट टू इट नेवर द लेस जस्ट लाइक समबडी कैन से आई डोंट बिलीव इन द लॉ ऑफ ग्रेविटेशन एंड दैट पर्सन गोस टू द सेकंड स्टोरी ऑफ हिज हाउस एंड जंप्स डाउन फ्रॉम देयर the law of gravitation will hold nevertheless it will not break the person will break his leg likewise whether we like it or not we are all under the law of karma some people say if i am not aware of this law does it still apply to me definitely it does suppose an ignorant villager arrives at the railway station for the first time and sees a train on the platform and gets in and the train starts off the ticket checker comes and asks ticket what ticket you need a ticket to travel in the train oh sorry sir i did not know next time i'll definitely purchase it the ticket checker says next time you do purchase but for right now you give me the money for the ticket and fine extra are you sir what kind of a person are you i am telling you i did not know he says it was your duty to come to know the railways laws it was not the railways duty to go and inform each passenger likewise god has made his rules available in the scriptures and they are taught by the saints it is for us to enquire and find them now this law of karma is not restricted to one life and that is what sometimes causes confusion take the case of annie besant who was called the diamond soul In the year 1917 she became the president of the Indian National Congress even though she was born in Great Britain she was also the president of the Theosophical Society in India but in her youth she went through a phase of disbelief as a young mother she had a daughter called mabel who used to suffer epileptic seizures when her fever would go high and this would happen again and again 
seeing the plight of her daughter was extremely painful for Annie and she started doubting if there is any god in fact she became an activist in society propagating atheism and scientific materialism until she came across a book that explained the law of karma and she understood there is not just one life we all have had many lives and very often what happens to us in this life is a consequence of the actions of the past life she then realized that her daughter was probably suffering for past karmas and that completely transformed her into a believer to the extent she came and settled down in bharat and the rest is history she was a brilliant orator an educationalist a writer she wrote more than 300 booklets books etc and of course a political figure as well so as per the law of karma good and bad things happen to us as a consequence of our own good and bad deeds and the existence of the law of karma is not to enable us to enjoy material luxuries but to learn the lessons and go towards our spiritual goal don't forget that this world is like the jail of god now i have visited the jail many times to give lectures the first time when i went i was just a 30 year old i was giving a lecture in the district capital of kandamal district in odisha and thousands of people used to come including the jailer one day he said swami ji you please have to come and meet my prisoners so i accompanied him and he put me in front of 40 prisoners i looked at them they were so miserable looking they had their eyes down as if they were feeling embarrassed to look me in the eye and i was stumped on what i would speak to them involuntarily it came out of me are you all unhappy all of a sudden those who had been looking down they straightened up their neck and started shaking and said yes they thought maybe swami ji has got some magic wand to remove all their miseries which definitely they had many i said you are unhappy very good now hearing that they were taken by surprise they thought they were expecting sympathy from swami ji at least they expect a swami ji to be a kind hearted person and he is rubbing salt in our wounds by saying very good i said look what is the purpose of a jail house supposing you become comfortable there you get all your wishes to live a luxurious life fulfilled in the jail house when the term is over and the government says okay go now you'll say let me do something so i return to the jail house so the jail house is necessarily a place of austerity likewise this material realm is for those souls who have their backs to god now in this situation if we could be permanently happy here there would be no need for god and hence the material energy ensures our lack of perfect bliss as long as we are here the ramayan states himate anala prakat baru hoi vimukh ram sukh pavan koi tulsi das ji maharaj says look fire may manifest from the ice this impossible may become possible but vimuk of god with the back turned towards god nobody can be truly happy so since this world is dukhalayam 
अशाश्वतम अ प्लेस ऑफ मिजरी एंड टेम्परेरीनेस वॉट इज देर सो सरप्राइजिंग वेन वी सी पीपल सफरिंग आउट हियर एंड वेन यू आर डिफाइनिंग समबडी एज अ गुड पर्सन रिमेंबर दैट पर्सन इज स्टिल इन द मेटीरियल रेल्म that person is a work in progress and if god is giving some suffering in that person's life as per their own karma it's not because god hates the person but he wants the person to be truly good to be perfect to reach the supreme goal of the soul which is god realization Let's have faith in the wisdom of God and in the law of karma and with that positivity let us surrender ourselves at the feet of